Too often we talk about personal knowledge management systems in terms of abstract philosophies and methodologies. But what I'm really interested in is how I can use the system to solve real problems in my daily life. Otherwise, it's just organizational masturbation. If you've watched my channel before, then you've probably noticed that I'm somewhere new, and that's because I am now in my new home country of Portugal. This move has been about six months in the making from the time that we put an offer on the house. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I researched, planned, and executed this cross-country move using my favorite note-taking tool, Obsidian. Just for some context, I am a Filipino, Australian, and Dutch citizen, and just a few weeks ago, I was living in Maastricht in the Netherlands with my husband. But our whole stay in the Netherlands hasn't worked out quite as well as we had hoped. Check out this video where I go more into detail about what I mean by that. But the primary reason that I looked at Portugal to begin with was the taxes. So just like with any sort of research, I like to start by reading these articles or sometimes books using Readwise. I've talked a lot about how I use Readwise, I've been using them for years, and I totally recommend them as a way to process notes and get the highlights synced, whether that's from articles or Kindle books or podcasts into your Obsidian Vault. So as you can see, the first highlight that I made on this article was in September of 2020. So I've been thinking about this for a while, long before I really needed to make the change. So I have a few articles like this one where I just have a few highlights here, and then I start to piece it together. So for example, if I type taxation in Portugal. Now I have this, okay, admittedly pretty bare page, but then when I click on it, then I've got a little bit more about the Portuguese non-habitual residency program, which I want to apply for. And I have a little bit about what it is and requirements for it and the tax rate, and then some quotes from articles that I've read. So at this point, I'd already pretty much decided that Portugal was a good country to move into for tax purposes, but taxes aren't everything. And I knew that in order to sell my husband on it and myself, I'd need to make sure that we actually loved the country. So then we had to go to Portugal and plan like a little reconnaissance trip where we went to different cities in the span of more than a month, trying to see where we best pictured ourselves fitting in. This is a page on Portugal that I created when we knew it we were going to Portugal to try and figure out where we wanted to live. So I am using the Obsidian Leaflet plugin. This is what it looks like. The reason that I'm using Obsidian Leaflet is it's really easy to add markers. So for example, each of these green ones are markers and I'm just going to add something now. To do that, all I need to do is to right click on something and then I can add the default, which for me is green. You can change what color your default marker is. And then when you edit the marker, you can then select a note to open. So this doesn't really make any sense, but I just wanted to link to an existing page just so you can see. And when I click out of that, now when I click on that, and I'm holding the command key so that it opens in a new window, it opens up the same page that I was just showing you. And then you can kind of move this around. You can also change the marker here. So instead of the default, maybe I want, you know, like a yellow one. You can change a lot of things about this marker. You can change the icon that you're using. So I've got one that is a thumbtack, for example, and you can see that it's still green, but now it is a thumbtack. And I've got one that is for water. That one just has like these wavy lines that signify that. So if we go to the Obsidian Leaflet settings, the only thing that I've really changed are these map markers. You can change the default map marker here. I'm just using this one. Or you can upload your own, which is kind of cool. And then you can select your marker color here. And then you can add additional map markers. 
So to do that, we can add an additional one here and let's just look for these icons. Here are all of the things that we can add for free. So it's already here and on the right, you can see a, little, a preview of what they would look like. So I'm just gonna scroll through here and look for something that looks interesting. Maybe let's add this asterisk. I'm going to call it asterisk. And then in this layer icon, I can decide whether I just want it as the asterisk or I can have it in this map marker base icon. I think I just want it as an asterisk for now, but I am going to change it and maybe make it like red. Now it's a red asterisk. I'm just going to click save here and now I have the red asterisk there. So if we go back to this, and this was our water marker, if I hit edit marker, then I can choose asterisk and now it's a red asterisk and again I can move this around. So let me delete that and show you what I actually used these things for. So here I have the whole map of Portugal and in Leaflet you can zoom in and out by using the mouse wheel and you can just click and drag or you can use these controls here. What I wanted to do was identify some places that we had marked as interesting for us. We didn't really want to go to Porto or higher than that, just because we wanted warmer weather. So everything that's green are places that we thought were interesting to check out. The cool thing is that as we actually visited some of these places, I created notes for them. So like if we look at the Tavira one, so here's my note on Tavira. I have some information about it that I got from Wikipedia. And then I also have some impressions on it. Tavira is all the way at the bottom here, really close to Spain. And I did that for a lot of these. As you can see, we definitely started in the Algarve region, but decided that there were too many tourists here. So we slowly worked our way up and finally settled on Stubal. I also have some more information about Portugal here. Some of the regions, because I wasn't familiar with it, central Portugal, and I tried to describe each one according to my understanding of it and have some of the major cities here. After we'd made a decision about the city and the specific house that we wanted, then we put an offer on the house and then I started to research how the house buying process is in Portugal. And also I was documenting along the way my experiences with the real estate agent and the bank that I was using just so I could remember what they were asking me for. There's a lot of documents involved in buying a house. You pretty much have to prove every bit of your life. After making the decision, that wasn't the end of it, of course, because we had to do a whole bunch of things just to move to Portugal. So I made this page. You'll notice that it isn't done yet. I have some categories here, but that I haven't really filled them out yet because I haven't done them all. So this is very much still in progress. So getting a NIF, for example, which I did last year. So I have a page that shows what a NIF even is and then how to get one. And then I have one for buying a house in Portugal, just a bit of a rundown of the entire process. So this is kind of fresh because we just signed the paperwork, but I'm going to be filling out all of these just so I know next time I need to go through buying a house again in Portugal or even just in other countries. It's really useful to have this step-by-step -step guide. The notes that I've shown you are far from perfect. They're not thorough enough to be a general guide for just anyone who's moving to Portugal because they're so based on my situation and nationalities and even what I'm looking for in a new home. But if I let that stop me from publishing these notes, then I'd probably never publish them because they're never going to be perfect. So I've put them up on my published Obsidian Vault, which I'll leave a link to in the description if you're interested in seeing that. And they're also not done. I am constantly updating them as I learn more about my new country and how things are done here. So now that we're kind of in the home stretch, I've also needed to do some task management around all of the things you need to do once you get a house. Now I have a Kanban board for that. I don't really want to show you my actual Kanban board because it's got like names and numbers of people. So I'm going to just create a new one. I'm going to hit the command pane by 
hitting Command P and then type in Kanban, create new board. And I'm going to say to do first and then in progress, waiting for and done. And this done one will be complete. Once you've got these things, you can change this to my move to Portugal. To Portugal. And then you can add things like um, get electricity connected, register at the local municip municipality. And then as things happen, you can move them across. You can also set dates here add date and then you can say that this really needs to be done by Friday for example. Having a Kanban board here has allowed me to get an overview of where I'm at with everything because there's a lot of juggling involved in buying a house and just being able to move in. I've mentioned two plugins in this video, Obsidian Leaflet and Kanban. I've made different videos on how to use those plugins in other contexts than moving to a new home. Check out this video to see how I use Obsidian for D&D, including Obsidian Leaflet for maps, and check out this one to see how I use Kanban for content creation. Até a próxima vez! Thanks for watching!